Hello everyone and welcome to Mod High Madness Season 1. My name is Karen. Today we're gonna look at Group A and the third game of Group A, which will be the winner's game between Faro85 and Valentine. It's gonna be a really interesting game here. Uh, we see here the groups as it turned out so far. 485 defeat Bobby Boyd 3 by 5-0. Valentine got Chris Cardiac by 7-4. It will be the first time 485 is recorded and uploaded in uh, this tournament. Uh, Valentine's game, we already saw that, so we can see what Faro is bringing to the table. Chances are pretty high he's bringing the exact same team that he brought in the last tournament, since he's playing mercenaries yet again. Uh, let's take a look here. We'll be watching this game from Valentine's perspective. Uh, we have Merchant's Quarter th Map 3, so no more story maps. Uh, and the undead against the mercenaries. I see that they are about to start, so let's just jump into the game and wish both of the players good luck. So here we are, pillagers. One warband is caught exploring buildings, while the other divides into three strike teams surrounding the buildings. We'll see how that turns out. It could be a pretty close and fast game here as they, the starting positions might be relatively close to one another. See here that Valentine brought uh, his Cryptor once again. Yeah, that's not really that close. I think Far 485 has a pretty good advantage here. He could just uh, move and uh, get one of the groups uh, before the others could come and intervene. Depends on the initiative here, we see that 485 has a pretty high initiative. That's gonna be crucial here because it gets to move before most of uh, Valentine's units do get to move. I think the wisest move here might be to move towards the wagon. Uh, or the bottom left group of Valentine. You can see the morale here in the top uh, left corner, 176 for Valentine, 190 for Pharaoh, which is uh, roughly the amount of uh, one more unit going down, might be even two, before Pharaoh takes a route test compared to Valentine. You can see here the map, as they're deploying, four units near the wagon, three units in the mid left and uh, top left three other units for valentine gonna skip ahead of deployment and see where the every unit end up and we're here for the first turn 485 has moved most of his units we haven't actually seen any unit yet so far but valentine is keeping a good track of the overhead map trying to see if he spots a trap going off or any other kind of area spell, as we also know, uh, the game can sometimes be a little buggy and actually reveal all of the units. I hope that doesn't happen in this particular game. So it's nice if you let your opponent know it, if that happens. And when I say reveal, it's sometimes there are these little circles coming out on top of the minimap, revealing where the enemy is. Very big advantage if that happens, so you should always try and play fair. We see here that uh, Valentine opted to put one necromancer in the top left with two henchmen, uh, a ghoul and a zombie, and he did the exact same thing for the mid-left position of the map. Ghoul, zombie and a necromancer. Leaving all of his other units, uh, the crypt horror, the vampire and the dark soul in by the wagon. No doubt uh, Faro is taking up uh, a good position here, uh, probably a high position within the buildings. Just waiting for his opponent to come to him. We do know that Faro likes to play with a heavy, heavy amount of range, uh, both magic and ranged firepower. And so we can expect to see that again. But the Crypt Horror, unlike most other impressives and especially unlike every other big impressive, can actually enter buildings. Although, as we saw in the previous game, there are still some jump up points that uh, are forbidden to him, that aren't forbidden to the Executioner or the Maiden, the two small impressives. But uh, it's up to Valentine to make full use of these units and hopefully not to get uh, 
ambushed here with all of Faro's team against one of his teams. But Faro85 doesn't seem to want to take the initiative. If he did, we would probably have seen at least one unit by now. But he's not moving towards one of the groups, not taking advantage of this deployment at all. Uh, which is a shame, I think. Um, I think it's always a shame when people go and run into buildings and just uh, hide there and wait for your opponent. I favor more aggressive play and I think that's the way forward. If you know how to handle it, you can always defeat someone who just camps in a building. See the first unit here for Valentine finally get to move. Dead stench. Um, kind of neat ability to use every now and then. Using delay. Yeah, why are you delaying? It's always it's only your units. We saw this against uh, Chris Kardec as well. Valentine just loves to use delay on everything. Don't really know why he just wasted so much time on delaying. It's not as crucial to get Call of Vandal on the goals. It's uh, as we already know. It's not too much. Actually, we, let's just. Uh, Bring that up so we refresh our mind a little bit. Increases movement by 4 and armor absorption by 30% for zombies, which is really big. But uh, for the ghouls, plus 20 initiative and plus 20 dodge chance, it's not that crucial. Uh, I think that the, the way you should use Call of Van Hell uh, when it comes to the ghouls or the cryptor indeed, especially as we see now that 485 has a slightly higher um, initiative than the units of fire, then you should just wait until they get into combat and then put down Call of Vanal. Because if he does that, he gets to attack twice before they can defend themselves. Uh, now he will be able to move twice, but I hope that he makes full use of that. Uh, because there are gonna be a few turns here where Far 5 gets to do two rounds in a row unless Call of Vandal is repeatedly cast on them. Let us see what Valentine here is up to. Um, yeah, it seems like he wants to pull his uh, uh, two leftmost group together, and he has uh, he's gonna succeed at that, no doubt. Um, gathering after two necromancers there, they're gonna be the focal point for these six units. But what about the other three? What about this vampires, crypt horror, and the dark soul? If you're gonna go hide in one corner here, um, where will they go? They're gonna find out soon because they are at the last point here in the initiative ladder. You could go through that building, we saw that there. Probably not here though, no. No opening. A nice feature by with all of these uh, maps here, unlike the story maps were set and always look the same, uh, when it comes to the merchant districts and the nobles quarter, uh, these maps uh, are always uh, varied. Uh, there is some sort of algorithm that uh, closes and opens doors and uh, puts forth uh, different kinds, of, like they have a specific building, uh, like a large building, and then they have three different types, and then you can put in any one of them in this specific spot on the map, and that means there is a lot of variety uh, in these maps. They never really look the same, at least when it comes to the buildings and where pathways are closed off and so forth. Not on what he has marked here. Did he actually see something that we did not? I don't think so. I saw him place down those markers and it wasn't for anything in particular. I guess it is where he thinks that the enemy might be. See, large warriors cannot use this. Uh, so the Cryptor still does uh, have a few drawbacks uh, to him for being large. So it's not just 
smooth sailing from here. Oh, we do see a champion, which still hasn't moved yet. Another delay. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense why he's using delay most of the time. You can leverage a lot of power with delay. You can use it to catch up on a spell uh, that you want, or you can use uh, delay to get a, an ability uh, for two turns rather than one. Um, well, there are a lot of things you can do. You can delay, 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 and then you will end up at the top of the initial level afterwards, and then you effectively get to attack twice in a row. There are lots of things, but I don't see Valentine using any of those when he used delay. He just delays. Maybe he wants to see what these units uh, are up to. Um, The vampire with a spear, kind of an uh, unusual weapon for them. It's good as a secondary slot, but uh, less so as a first slot. Uh, C485 might have been moving forward here, trying to trap uh, one of the groups. And if that's the case, and if it did go towards the wagon, as I said, would be a really the best choice here because it's the furthest away from the two other groups. Then Valentine has really done himself a disservice here, gathering after two other groups instead of going right after them, as now they will be even further delayed in coming to help the Cryptora Vampire and the Dark Soul. And if 5 knows this and is aware, which he should be, as he saw uh, what this map was uh, as well, then he should just go for it, just rush towards the, the wagon. Frostbite. So we do see um, an early attack here. The magic resistance is pretty good for Alexei. I wouldn't target more spells on him. Especially not with that Roll Divine Rat success. You see 14%. Yikes. Uh, Valentine checking up. Where did, did those units go? Your Kainzer is still there. So you could just... Since you have superior movement to that guy, you could just uh, go in, attack him with the rest of your red pills from the um, Cryptor. I should probably do that. Oh, this was the purpose of the laying. You don't have. Don't have exhaustion, no? All right. Um, hit twice and can't move, and it's very exposed with that unit. So that's not good. That was the unit that you wanted to hide, uh, and if uh, four to five goes for this now, he could kill off the impressive, which would be really big. Mm. He keeps delaying, maybe he's out for something. Maybe this is an order vampire. We do see most warriors here going. You can see that they have lots of wounds and heavy armor, pretty much on everything. They have very much heavy armor, not too much in in the way of damage here for these units. So they are just tanks holding up units while the rest of Farah 85s units shoot them up. Most likely, we have already seen two marksmen. Here we do see the champion, complete in heavy armor and a shield, so we might not have the best uh, terror resistance here. 
ideally you want a tarot caster or a fear caster to charge into you because then you have to take the test and if you see the test you don't have to take it on your own turn because you're immune and uh, usually when you are the one being attacked it doesn't matter as much to get terrorized or uh, being fearful I could block the doorway here uh, just using a delay as well yeah he's definitely up with something here with uh, this vampire he's right uh, just uh, two initiative lower than the crypt horror of course there's something up there the dark soul is coming up the last unit to have it to be able to move in the first round really putting himself out there probably yeah, what's what is the purpose here well he's uh, he's a good bait uh, see if he takes it here with the dark soul this dark soul who was so misused against uh, Chris Cardiac if you remember that game hmm not great Especially not considering that it's his turn coming up soon. Valentine really wanted someone to engage the Cryptor, but it's not going to happen this turn unless the champion is really foolhardy here. He must have seen the vampire delaying all the time, so he knows that something's up. I would not attack into that. It's the champion's uh, obligation to attack here. Um, uh, why? Why? Let the champion attack instead. Uh, adaptable defense plus 3% melee resistance for the champion each time he hits. Well, at least it does land one strike here. Um, I don't think he can disengage from that. Which means that he's stuck there. That was the last attack, unless you use adrenaline rush here. Gonna see what the vampire is up to. The last one to move. Well, you just got up there. You can use the stairs, it goes faster. Uh, he, he seems to be intent on going. Yeah, yeah, I figure. He's an order, but it's very weird to have the basic order because as you saw he was he was confused there about the range But if you have master order, you do get a much greater range than that So I don't really understand why he only went for the basic order um, In fact, let's just let's bring that up. I mean you see what it's what it does here, but I mean it got a free attack against a random valid target but uh, there is another thing here, the, which is that with uh, the Mouser Daughter, not only do you have double the range, you also get, also get plus 15% uh, chance to hit. And now you don't get that. And you can see that that would have been pretty useful uh, against uh, the defensive uh, champion here, who kept getting his passive triggered, so he got more and more melee resistance, and he still retains that until it's his turn. You see Walker 
probably has learned this lesson and won't target the crypto. The crypto, as you remember, had 77 medic resistance. Might be better off targeting the Dark Soul here, or if you can see it, see him, the vampire. Yeah, he can see the vampire. Very nice. <coughs> Curse of Rust. Cool. That means that he loses a lot of uh, armor. Let's see another lightning star case. Probably one of the best spells. Not where is he going? I think that's a big mistake there by 485. I think that's a big mistake. You see where the crypto is located? The crypto could just easily just climb up there, go and kill off that warlock easily. He does enough damage to kill him off, and um, he didn't even finish in a stance because he used so much movement to get there. You yeah, no need to be careful, like the entirety of uh, Faro's team here is uh, charging your three guys. You need to get there as soon as possible. Yeah, You can hide here if you want, but it's just going to mean that you lose out. No, why? Yeah, I guess if you see any traps here, do we see any traps here? We see one right outside here, but... Maybe that saves a little bit of movement for someone, uh, but he really needs to move up there, come on. You can see the position of the two marksmen, they, they are not in a position to fire at you. Alright. Want to stay safe, uh, but I am fearful of the vampire, the cryptor and the dark soul, especially the dark soul, he's half felt already. And it might be that by the time Valentine's cautious approach here, which is extremely cautious, we saw that in Chris Cardiac's game, it's... But there he had a sort of plan. Now it seems to be beyond reason. You need to fast gather your team here. Right now, you're going to suffer. Wow. I wonder if that smuggler is going to put himself in the same bad position as the, the Warlock. Would have been a dream for the crypto. Provided that the uh, order vampire here lives. Gonna use a little bit of exhaustion to get away. Oh, to get aim. Wow. Yeah, she can't have run too far. Also a terrible position. The crypto can just go up there and massacre either one of those units. I mean, even if you put someone on the stairs there, you need to... You can see there is only one unit left for Farrah to 5 to move here and he can only protect one of those two units. So it's either the Warlock or the Smuggler who's gonna bite it here and we might see a first kill surprisingly going to, to Valentine. Considering the position here, he really shouldn't be in a position of uh, strength and I think that he is doing some mistakes so far with some of his units. I hope that the zombies at least can rush here with a 9 movement. I assume 9 movement at least, if they have knowledge more time. And we're gonna see 3 more attacks from the other archer here, but the crypto is not gonna die from this and uh, he can go up there and kill some units, or at least a unit. One of, either one of those two heroes look really juicy for Valentine to go and pick up. Let's see what Reichwald does here. For it, yeah, they keep focusing on the Cryptoro. They're doing pretty good damage. 
I wonder if does the crypto actually have a purple cloth on him? I think it does, but he must have been using bows of perforation here to get up to that kind of damage. Very nice, almost finished off the crypto. <laughs> 485 probably wishes that he had engaged the crypto here instead of uh, keeping him in the open here. You always have to plan for this. Plan every single move. Don't just... Oh, there we see him. We see our captain here. So the captain could uh, block some... Uh, oh, he could kill off the vampire maybe. But I can definitely block up off some paths here. Making sure that the tarot is not going to be a uh, nuisance here to him. And he does charge him. Alright. Yeah, I could definitely kill him here. See the curse of rust really working. Working out good here. Taking off most of that armor. So we see a first kill going to 485. Valentine just lost his uh, poor order vampire. Now where will he put the captain? He can't protect both of uh, the warlock and the smuggler. He need he can only protect one of them. Oh, please don't use the lay. Just move. Come on, your entire team is in dire need of help. You're gonna lose the cryptor before it's actually before you get there. Yeah, but what are you gonna cast? What's, what are we going to cast this time? Corpse Flash, alright. Well, Corpse Flash is a good spell. Uh, let's bring it up. Critical and poison resistance by 30% and armor absorption by 10%. That means that those zombies could be pretty tough. But why do they need to be tough right now? They are not in combat. Get them into combat. That's the thing. I hope the zombies move here with all haste and don't go into cover with two or three blue pills left over. Just please move as fast as possible if you want this game to be even remotely close. And if you can ambush one of the, or both of the marksmen, that would have been fantastic too. Uh, you're going the wrong way. You saw that the two marksmen were virtually at the same location and uh, getting to them would have been really, oh, watch out for the trap here. We don't know it's a trap, you saw it with the perception. There we go. I can even get further movement here, by stealing the idol. Are we gonna do that, Pavel? Yeah, why not, Pavel? Do it! Yeah, or don't. Yeah, he seems to be intent on finding out where the marksmen are. I think that's good. Um, although if they don't have a shooting opportunity and they won't have when the Cryptor leaves and goes and kill the warlock. Yeah, you, you just tried going in there. Come on. There we go. There was the trap. Um. Yeah, why not just end your turn? Uh, could have ended it on top of the icon and picked it up. All right, go up and kill the warlock here. The warlock. No, don't... What's that? Is that the captain? Yeah, it is the captain. He left him here. Uh, in Web of Steel, probably. 
Mm, I think this was a, another big mistake by Valentine. Of course. Uh, why didn't he just jump up there? I mean... That is a jump up point that you can do, and if that's not the case, if it's something with the map that you can't actually jump up there with the impressive, uh, despite it being large, like it is one of the large points that you can jump down from, so you should jump up. But if that wasn't the case, which is extremely unlikely, he was near the house, just walk up the house and go there. Like you can just take the stairs up and you would have gotten to the warlock. You could have killed the warlock instead of doing this. Doing a little bit of damage on the captain. That's exactly what Far 85 wanted here. Despite the mistake that Far 85 did there with both of the smuggler and the warlock, he is not punished for it. And I don't think, no, there's no unit that can actually go up there now because the only unit he has available is the Dark Soul. And the Dark Soul might actually die here before he moves. And in any case, he can't disengage. <laughs> yep, gonna take a lot of damage. Not from Jory Kainzer, but the champion is coming up too. Could even uh, take some damage here from the Wolf Priest uh, using the Frostbite again. Or just go in there and finish it, it off with his Ulrican Great Axe. Also a possibility. Yeah, I wonder what Valentine can do at this point. Uh, if he can neutralize the two marksmen, yeah, that could help, but he would still be well behind. He might be able to grind it out against these warriors. He seems to be tougher with Corpse Flesh and Call of Vanel. Yeah, if you put yourself on the other side of the wagon, it would be much better. Now you're gonna lose three blue pills here from Frostbite. That's what, basically what the spell does. A little bit of damage and losing three blue pills for the next turn. I think it was good of 485 here to move towards this group. It was uh, less good of Valentine. Imagine that if he had moved directly towards uh, his wagon group here, uh, he could, within this turn, actually have entered combat instead of being where he is right now. Big difference uh, in the decision making. I think he should go up. He doesn't even have a... A look at great axe. He uses something else here. It looked like a dagger. <laughs> Might be because he wants this uh, particular unit to be at a certain uh, initiative. Although he does have a high chance of uh, being punished here with divine wrath. You see, just of the second spell, it was up to twenty nine percent. That's lucky for Faro. But I believe Farah was pretty lucky last tournament as well, so he might not respect the curse chances here. It's gonna bite him at some point. But I remember when he, the other, only other game we had with uh, Part 5 defeating Slavier in the marketplace in the last tournament, he also braved the curse chances quite a bit and he was never really punished for it, despite going up to really high chances. Uh, so you might not respect it, but most players do, uh, and it's gonna bite Far 85 at some point. We'll see what these warlocks have. I didn't actually pay attention to that. But there we go! Uh, finishing blow, and uh, we have the Vampire and the Dark Soul are both gone for Valentine. And so far it's working out great for Far 85. Seems like he's gonna win Group A here. Uh, Especially since the Cryptor is going down, what other kind of power will Valentine have available to him? He has not too much, uh, actually. He has two ghouls, he has two zombies, and the zombies are at best just tanking. And uh, the ghouls don't seem to do too much damage, especially since I think they were one handed, right? So they are a bit like dodge tanks as well. 
And then the other two necromancers who insist on using all of the red pills on buffing these units up. So it's a grindy kind of setup. Um, maybe the necromancers have some offensive spells available to them and they can go ahead and do something. We have seen Drain Life uh, earlier against Chris Cardiac, so he might still have that. I know he did redid his warband for this particular game, Valentine that is. Didn't seem to do him too much good, he might be going back to the drawing board after this game. But it's not over quite yet. Still have a little bit left to play. I think it's too late to save the crypt arrow. Let's look at all of the arrows. <laughs> He's one guy who's very much into piercings. Taking a lot of time for this warrior to do anything. And the last war is the one by the statue, the one who went into an ambush. Right in the middle of the open here. In heavy armor, no less. So they could have easily been charged and uh, neglected the ambush. Um, but yeah, I'm annoyed that he didn't go for the warlock. Why, why didn't Valentine go for the warlock? Go for the soft targets. Go for the damage dealers. So they went up against a tanky captain here. and. Uh, I don't think that this Cryptor is going to live until his next turn, so I don't think he's going to get to attack anymore. The marksman who might sense that there is a horde of henchmen coming up to them, might just jump down there and go behind the Cryptor and start shooting and kill him. Could just as well do that a with the smuggler, probably just kill him with the smuggler. Just jump down. Go around a little bit, reload, and fire, fire, fire. As you can see, the ghouls now, they, since you're under the call of Van Hell, they have boosted their initiative plus by plus 20. So they are 68, 86. But next turn, they're going to lose out on call of Van Hell. And they need to be recast, or 485 is going to get two turns in a row against these ghouls. See Curse of Rust here, once again, removing uh, most of the armor. And another lightning strike. Actually, let's uh, not be too forward, let's bring that up again. You see that the base damage is really high per red pill. One of the most damaging spells in the game. A very nice spell to have, and something that all warlocks always, always use. You would have thought that the fireball was the signature spell, but no, it's lightning strike. Alright, Stanislav. Let's see what you can do here. Uh, he's already moved one of the marksmen. Uh, good riddance to him as well. Uh, if you are not in a position to get Call of Vanal after this, you're gonna lose that initiative and then you're gonna be targeted by all of this range and maybe the captain twice. You get two turns. And of course there's no reason to suspect that uh, Far if I won't uh, use Call of Vanal, he likes to use it. But yeah, this... Uh, Stanislav is probably not going to receive it. Uh, I think he might be a bit out of range. It's good that he catched up on the marksman here, but he didn't trap him, and the marksman can just jump down from that position. Uh, it's no need to go up there with two of them. Uh, Uh, they have a w some words down there. Alright, I think this is where we see uh, the Cryptor dying. Um, I know that the captain has uh, 
some attacks left too, but let's start shooting him. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Uh, it was very, very, very easy here. And uh, the impressive is down. Valentine is losing rapidly. We see that he only has 33 morale left until he has to take a route test. Which one of the necromancers will have to do? And if he maxed out the intelligence on them, he won't have too great of a leadership stat. Um, let's see what kind of leadership they actually have. Yep, I mean, I think it was unavoidable maybe that the Cryptar would have died here because of how trapped he was, but not taking the Warlock with him. Uh, it's gonna be gonna be rough. And we saw that with the lightning strikes and everything. Already doing a bit of damage. Already adding Curse of Rust. What can he shoot from here? Or do he want to shoot anything from here? He probably wants to jump down as soon as possible. Shoot and uh, run, the, run away afterwards. Do the damage at least. Mm hmm. Alright. Yeah, I can't jump down from there. Uh, are you gonna trap yourself if you leave yourself there? I'll dream is Leitner. But maybe he has a plan. Maybe he wants to come up here with some other unit and help out. Mm, remember that the ghouls cannot disengage if anyone else just climbs up there. It's... Uh, oh yeah, he, he does actually leave the unit there. Alright. Uh, if someone else just climbs up there, the ghoul cannot disengage and... And also can just pour fire into him. So it, he needs to get someone up there. Uh, and the Valentine has not blocked the path. Uh, maybe... Maybe the captain could get up there. I don't really know where the wolf priest went. He went towards the statue and went into an ambush, but uh, around the corner near the statue, blocking off a very odd path for Valentine to take. Maybe he, he can come up there and help out if he's not too far away. Captain might also be better, but he has plus one blue pill. Looking for a good firing position. Time is running out. Maybe didn't have the range to reach that zombie. Unfortunate, since he used Curse of Rust on him. Time is running out. Probably going to an overwatch somewhere. See the captain, he's free. Let's see what he does. Still didn't take too much damage here against uh, the Crypt Horror, so he is probably faring better. Yeah, the Warband Knight has lost his idol, minus 60 morale, so he went straight to the wagon, which was just. Uh, Adjacent to the building he was in. And now we can see that he only needs to lose 70 morale, which is just one henchman loss, unless it's one of the zombies, since they don't um, affect morale at all when they go down. So, one of the ghouls or one of the necromancers, and then we will see a route test for Valentine. He's already lost three units. Dark Soul, Crypt Horror, and of course the Vampire. Can he can he reach the ghoul from here? I think he might. Okay, he's. Uh, 
Um, Alright. Um, gonna have to talk to Valentine about that. Uh, as he cannot use purple and uh, purple consumables uh, in this tournament, uh, not that it seems to help him, but uh, it is against the rules, so that is very unfortunate to see. I think it's best if we have the next uh, Modern Mana Season 2 without consumables. As it seems to confuse people sometimes what the different colors are. Um, I'm not, not taking a stab at Valentine here. Some people are having issues with that and they are having issues with finding blue uh, consumables. Which is unfortunate since most of Warband files, that means Slavery Provided, do not have blue consumables. Um, so you have to actually green them up. Renewing Call of Van Hell. Okay, so hiding in the building here. Uh, well, he doesn't have anyone that he needs to go and rescue anyway. Since uh, they are all dead, it was too late. Renewing corpse flesh. Wonder what kind of uh, armor these uh, zombies have now. Let's see. 30% yeah that's because curse of rust removes it by 40% so you should have 70 which is uh, very good actually it means that he has purple cloth and a helmet as we can see but no rule of uh, rune of iron I uh, could get it up even higher Since purple cloth is 15%, helmet is 5%, that's 20. Then we have call of vandal, that's 30, so we're up to 50%. Corpse flesh, 60% now. And if you had uh, rune of iron, it would be 70. Yeah, you do have you do have rune of iron actually. Otherwise, you wouldn't have gone to 70%. Curse of Rust, Curse of Rust. It's one of those spells that are exactly the same as another spell, namely Sorcerer's Curse of the Skaven Sorcerer, the Eshin Sorcerer. Uh, but the Sorcerer's Curse from the Skaven costs exactly the same, uh, is more or less exactly the same in effect. Yes, it does minus 30% dodge and parry as well on the target for Sorcerer's Curse. So Curse of Rust for the Mercenaries is just slightly weaker. Very unlucky here on the parry, uh, you have to say that missed on 86% chance there, but uh, he makes it up for it by rolling a 29% chance hit, which was nice. And this zombie is taking some damage now. Curse of Rust is actually paying off. <coughs> I think it's a good thing here. Um, oh wow, let's see that mark of dismay. Let's put that up actually. Oh wait, I don't have it available right now. Um, I must guess how the abilities and skills etc to bring up as a pop up. All right, let's see what Bartholf has uh, wants to do. Um, I think that he should also go and try actually i don't like the flea here I, I i get the point here that you don't want to stay exposed but with the warriors why not i mean this is not about points at all or injuries etc all it is about is tying up the few units that valentine has left available to him 
You're gonna see boss fight here, uh, removing three blue pills as well. If he is smart here, he uses that on the other zombie as well, really preventing their movements. Uh, he will still have nine movement, but he will only have three blue pills left since Hashman only start with six. Uh, remember the Divine Rat chance here? 14% after the first spell, so... You see it's one dagger and one sword, so he could probably do parry. 4 out of 5, just wasting some time here. Yeah. Thinking about another first fight, let's see if the Curse Chance bites him. No, it never really seems to do. Far to five is extremely lucky in this regard. You can see ignore pain, the basic version. Um, bit odd, so it's gonna take 20 damage after this, and he gets uh, just a little bit of 10% uh, more armor, and as well with goddess dance, also 10% more armor. So it's gonna be really difficult to. Uh, hurt in that case, but uh, let's not forget that there are two necromancers nearby and they could definitely do quite a bit of damage uh, by their magic attacks, even if the zombies and the ghouls are not doing that. It'll be interesting to see this particular ghoul, Stanislav, I think his name was, going against the marksman. Uh, okay, this is definitely gonna end poorly for this zombie. Let's see if he ties up the Necromancer here, that's what I would have done. It's the smart choice. Uh, the zombie doesn't have any other option to go into him anyway. But tying down the Necromancer would be really good. We also have another Necromancer down here now. Or is that a ghoul? Um, I have to actually call. Yeah, okay, so it's he, he went in against the ghoul. Can't say I really support this move. Um, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Mark of Dismay and the Seas Carry. The Seas Carry is a random debuff, as we all know. Mark of Dismay is. Uh, well, it depends. If it's on the weapon here, it's minus 6% to all alone, fear, and terror. But if it's on the head slot, it's uh, minus 12%. Uh, and if you use a two-handed weapon, it's also minus 12%. So you can stack those to get minus 24%. So it's a really powerful combination for the undead uh, to really make fear and terror work in their advantage, especially against the mercenaries who all are susceptible to it. We don't see any flagellants from a new to round has started. Well, this is just the, the inevitable coming up here. He's lost two henchmen and an impressive and one leader. So already down 4-0. And there is not much left, much power left here for Valentine to do anything. Um, I don't even think any of Forest units is really damaged so far. They're not really hurt. You can see the poor Stanislav here, he did lose his Van Hells as we expected. So now the marksman who put himself there, he will get to shoot again at him. And he could possibly run away. If this was planned out by far, it would have been ingenious, but I don't think it actually was. See a bit of resistance here on the lightning strike. <laughs> Uh, focusing on one of the necromancers, that's good. There's gonna be, be a route test if he goes down. You can do that one more time. And another if he has Adrenaline Rush mustered here. Mm, at least he focuses on reducing the curse chance here for his uh, Warlock. Uh, we see Kidney Strike. Kidney Strike. Cool spell. Is that uh, cool ability that's gonna be used? It is, so minus 15% uh, meal resistance for that uh, particular champion. See another mark of dismay, but he needs to be in combat with two units. If the necromancer goes in there, then they will actually have some effect, and I hope he does. I hope he doesn't just stay there. Uh, so you can actually deny this uh, champion 
So you saw that he has the has the helmet as well, so he doesn't have that great of an all alone stat, I think. So just go in there and you can neglect his entire turn as he fails his all alone. And if he fails, he might actually flee too, and that means uh, some free attacks will be good with the Necromancer since he won't have used his first attack yet, so he's gonna do 200 damage with the first attack, which is the best amount of damage that they can do. Uh, gonna see some shooting coming up here momentarily, I think. Who are you trying to shoot at? Necromancer would be a good choice if you can hit him. Um, yeah, you can hit him right in the window here. Reload, 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 and exhaustion. Exhaustion has actually damaged the uh, 485 more than uh, Valentine has damaged 485, I think. I know that's an exaggeration, but there is some, um, some adrenaline rushes, some exhaustions, and I don't think that the Cryptor did that much damage. Did he hit once, I think? It's not that much. Yeah, Virgilio Rasvan is not going to be long for this world. Let's see what this uh, marksman is up to. Will he run away or will he stay there? I mean, you had a good shooting position right there. Let's shoot him and then run away. Let's see vital shot. Uh, that's plus 10% critical hit chance, which didn't do anything. You can see the zero there. And the roll range critical hit chance, seven target zero. So it didn't do anything. Doing a bit more damage. Uh, time to run away. Yeah, so maybe 485 actually planned that. It would have been, uh, yeah, I really don't think Farah has that kind of planning uh, or awareness considering the Warlock and the Smuggler's positions, but uh, he might have planned that. I figured that, oh, Call of Anal is running out and Call of Anal is not going to be recast when he's up there. He could have been recast, but you saw that the Necromancer was more intent on uh, looking at the wordstone on the ground, which he couldn't pick up, then actually casting it. Um, yeah, Stanislav, you're taking a beating here. Could uh, do three shots. And another one with adrenaline rush. Uh, he's in no danger, should just use adrenaline rush. There we go. Uh, another 95% hit chance doing a lot of damage. You can see 14. He still does the same amount of damage as he did to the Cryptor, more or less, indicating bows of perforation. Plus 20% armor bypass. Which means that these schools have no armor at all. They have 15% to start with. Okay, Karl von Mortborg. What can you do? Uh, you could finish off the Necromancer, probably. I think there was still room for that. Uh, remember that he has plus three movement now since he picked up the idol. There he is. Finishing off Necromancer, are you? Yep, you are. You can definitely do that. Wow, Colin Mortborg has a lot of blue pills left remaining. See the end here, so we're going to see a route test is uh, for low. Valentine. Um, only reason he is going up there is that he wants to climb, yeah, and get at poor little Stanislav, who completely failed Valentine, or Valentine failed him more likely. It should be up there, right? And you get uh, when you do that, uh, your next attack, and uh, when you climb up on someone or jump down on someone like that, your next attack uh, is a sort of surprise attack. Uh, I think. That's what happened there. Yeah, because you saw the animation, the little sound. That means that the next attack cost one red pill less. Uh, it's a nice little feature that's n rarely coming into use, but it's cool to see. And we see uh, 4 out of 5 here defeating Valentine. It was a pretty easy game. 4 out of 5 rushed, rushed towards the wagon. 4 Valentine just delayed and delayed and delayed and didn't get there in time. Um, even though he could have, and he didn't do a single casualty or not too much damage either. So we see 485 won group A, 6-0 uh, over Valentine. Valentine is going to face uh, 
a deciders game between Chris, whoever l wins against Chris Kardec and Bobby Boyd Freed. And uh, I think that was it. Not that interesting of a game to watch, I suppose, but uh, it's nice that you can see the kind of mistakes that uh, players of all kinds do, even 4 to 5. I mean, see 4 to 5 is the first one to go to the playoffs, so congratulations to him. And uh, I hope it will be an interesting game, whoever he gets to face. I think it's the winner of Group F. Uh, so it's probably